This video will show you the bare minimum basics you need to survive on the command line. First things first, opening the terminal. On Ubuntu, you can find your applications by opening the dashboard located in the upper left, here. Then type in the application you want, in this case, terminal. When you click on it, it'll open. And you can also right click on the application in the sidebar and click lock to launcher so you don't have to search for it in the dashboard again. Also, if you hold click on the icon and drag it, you'll be able to change its location. Your terminal probably won't look like mine with the colors, the path, and the time up here. That's because I customize mine. If you want to check out those customizations or use them for yourself, you can search Google for Sam King config files and click on the first result. You can browse through any of these files and use them for yourself. Now, if I opened a folder in the graphical user interface, I could see where I was. If I was in the downloads folder or the music folder, for instance, I could see that I was there. If I want to tell where I am in the command line, I can use a command called pwd, print working directory. And you can see that now I'm in slash home slash Sam King. pwd will give you what's called the path of the directory you're in. It gives you an absolute path. An absolute path is any path that starts with a slash. It's called absolute because it starts at the root of the file system. To see all of the files and folders in my current directory, I can use ls. ls stands for list segments, and a segment is what people used to think of files as. To see all of the hidden files in addition to the normal files and folders, you can use the dash a flag. A flag is something that changes how a command works, and it'll usually start with a dash and be a single letter, or start with two dashes and be a word. The long form for ls-a is ls-all. In Unix, if a file or folder starts with a dot, it's hidden unless you're using dash a. Another common flag for ls is dash l, which gives you the long list view. In other words, more information. Here you can see the permissions, the owner, the group, the file size, as well as the date it was last modified. You can also use ls on a folder to see the files in that folder. One additional note about flags and commands in general, on the command line, different arguments are separated by spaces. So ls-a doesn't work because the shell is looking for a command called ls-a uh, without any spaces in there. This also means that if you have a file with a space in it, you need to tell the shell that it's one file rather than two. For instance, if you have a directory with spaces here, if I say ls a directory with spaces, that won't work. It says that there's no such file or directory. The easiest way to fix that is with quotes. If I put quote before a directory with spaces, it'll realize that it's one argument. If I want to go somewhere, I can use the cd command, which stands for change directories. Just type cd followed by the directory you want to change to. You can specify a relative path of a directory or an absolute path. Since I was in my home, or slash home slash Sam King, that meant that a relative path would be looking for something inside of slash home slash Sam King. So I could just say cd downloads, which was a relative path, because there was a folder slash home slash Sam King slash downloads. And that's where I am now. I also could have given the full absolute path, though. I could have said cd slash home slash Sam King slash downloads, and that would have had the same effect. There are also a few special characters for the path. If you want to go home, you can use tilde. So cd tilde will take you home regardless of where you currently are. If you want to go one directory up, you can use dot dot. So to change from slash home slash Sam King to slash home, I can just say cd dot dot. If you want to refer to the current directory, you can use a single dot. And even though I talked about the path in the context of cd, all of these things will work for any command that needs a file or a location. To recap those special characters, an absolute path starts with a slash, a relative path doesn't start with a slash, your home is tilde, a dot is the current directory, and dot dot is one directory up. 
Now, all of this has been a lot of typing. That's annoying, especially with long file names. One way to reduce the amount you have to type is tab completion. If I type CD SA tab, it will complete to Sam King. If I type CD DO and then hit tab, it'll complete to downloads. Also, a lot of times you need to run the same command over and over again. For instance, if you're running a test suite for your code and you want to run it again, you shouldn't have to type out the full command again. To access your command history, you can just use the up and down arrows. One common desire that people have with our command history is to change one small part of it. You can use the left and right arrow keys to change where your cursor is, and you can use backspace to delete one character at a time, but you can't use your mouse to select a bunch of characters and then delete them all. You'll see it only deleted one character there. The mouse just doesn't work in most terminal applications. And that's it for navigation. I'm going to talk about two text editors, Vim and Emacs, but I'm a Vim user, so I don't have Emacs installed. If I try to run Emacs, it'll tell me the command wasn't found and prompt me to install it. In Ubuntu, you can use sudo apt-get install Emacs to install Emacs. Here it'll give some information about the installation. Usually those are just details, so you can probably ignore it. Also notice here that there's a Y that's capitalized. That means that yes is the default option, so if I just press enter, it'll automatically go with yes. Now you've seen how to install something, but let's go over the different parts of that command. sudo stands for super user do. It gives you administrator privileges for one command. Without sudo, this command wouldn't have worked because we were trying to install Emacs for everybody. When using sudo, though, beware. You're the administrator, so you could do things that would mess up the whole system. apt-get is a package manager in Ubuntu. It keeps track of everything you have installed, as well as some dependencies. This means that if you uninstall Emacs, it might detect that some other libraries that you installed are no longer needed, and uninstall them as well. Other flavors of Linux might have different package managers, and Macs don't come with their own package manager built in. If you want one, you can install Mac ports, Homebrew, or Fink. Package managers come configured with certain repositories that the distribution has vetted, so there is some guarantee of safety when you install something through a package manager, though it's not perfect. Also, not everything is available through a package manager. That's it for installation.